God a high praise and bless him. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give God a high praise. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Bless his great name. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord Jesus. Please smile at everybody sitting in your section and tell them it's an honor to sit next to you. Go ahead. Tell them that. It is an honor to sit next to you. Praise the Lord. It is good to be back and see you all here today, this Lord's Day, and so many of you have come out again, and thank God I don't take it for granted that you come each and every week that you're here, and those that are watching online by the thousands, we certainly do not take that for granted. We are thankful that the Lord has blessed us to be in this place and to love him and people of all different ethnicities and walks of life and backgrounds. Isn't it good that we have one common ground and that's our love for God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our love for God and the fact that God loves us. So we're grateful, certainly thankful for all that God has done. We're going to jump right into the word here and get some good teaching and see what the Lord has for us so that we can continue to do all that he's called us to do. I was uh, just thinking as I walked upstairs, I said, Lord, you're so faithful. You're so faithful. There's a woman that was in the last celebration. Many of you would not, <clears throat> excuse me, know her. She's been a part of this church for some time, but uh, she had one child, one son, who suddenly passed away last year of at a young age, uh, he was in his, I uh, believe, his early 30s, late 20s, early 30s. And uh, I, you know, was thinking about her because she did something today that she has not done in months. And that was that she came in and she said, Bishop, she said, I want to take a picture, but I don't want to do anything that would be distractive to anybody. But I just, I just love this purple quilt. That's up here. And her son's favorite color was purple. So she came and took a picture of it. Now, she doesn't know this yet. She's on her way home. But she said, she said, Bishop, can you find out who did the quilts? Well, I know who did the quilts. Because the people that I did my research on for my PhD are the Gullah Geechee of the, uh, the sea coast or the sea islands on the uh, East Coast in South Carolina. Well, they're the ones who've done the quilts. And uh, she says, well, Bishop, just give me her number and I'll take care of it. I'm going to reach out and get a quilt. Now, she doesn't know this yet because she's on her way home. But by the time she get home, you all would have known before she knows that's her quilt. <laughs> <She's> <laughs> that's going to be her quilt. And I say that only to say you know, for her to even take the steps, it's been hard for her to even to come to church. It's been very difficult for her to even come to church, and she's been pressing. She still somewhat sits towards the back. Uh, this was a woman that served quite a bit here in the church, but she kind of sits in the back. She's still very weepy, very teary-eyed. And, uh, you know, she's got a, a group of women around this church who have surrounded her and support her and encourage her. And uh, uh, the fact that she came and saw the quilt and then came up on the stage to take a picture of the quilt. I said, well, God is good. He's bringing her on out. <laughs> bringing her on out. <laughs> Dear hearts, it's okay to grieve. You have to. But don't grieve as though you have no hope. Don't stay there. You got to keep pressing. You got to keep pressing. Somebody's in the room right now and you're grieving. Because you got, it doesn't even have to be a death, but it can feel like a death. It can feel like a death. It don't even have to be a death. But you're grieving. But don't stay there. Don't stay there. Know that God is still on the throne. He loves you. He's got you. Come on. We got you. 
You're going to be all right. You hear me? You're going to be all right. So cry if you have to, and then get that Kleenex. Get that Kleenex. And then after church, go get you a three-piece at KFC and be about your business, all right? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. All right, children. Let's get into the Word. That 745 crowd almost preached me today. I'm going to be nice and try to teach this the right way. I'm going to try to behave, all right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Father, thank you. Your word is blessed. We receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, look at somebody and say, I really am glad to see you. Go ahead and tell them, I'm so glad to see you. I am so glad to see you. Open your Bibles with me to Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Written by the Apostle Paul. He writes this as to uh, the church of Rome. He is addressing two audiences. He's addressing the Jews. Then he's addressing the Gentiles, then he's addressing them collectively. In a moment, we're going to see how he brings it together and it is contextualized for us today and applicable for us today. Uh, we are in the series of this year, the ministry of the Holy Spirit. We are focusing this entire year on the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And uh, most specifically, we're talking about uh, part three today, the joy of the Holy Spirit. The joy of the Holy Spirit. Uh, Elder Cindy Kane, who is sitting here to my left, she did a marvelous job. At, <laughs> marvelous job at giving us an introduction to this part of the series. And then last week, uh, uh, Pastor Dennis Armstrong just knocked it out the park. And with this kind of folks preaching and around in here and teaching this word, I'm like, I'm going to have to sit y'all down because you ain't leaving nothing for me. <laughs> ain't leaving anything for me. But on the contrary, we are blessed by all of the teachers that God blesses us with here. Whereas many congregations fly folks in and, and pay a bunch of money to bring them in and so forth. We are blessed to have it in the house. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful for that. Amen. And uh, I'm going to begin reading here. I want you to follow along with me. I'll read the first to the fifth verse. Follow along with me. I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Please hear the word. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith... We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, we have also obtained access by faith into the grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Uh, I want you to, if, if you would, and you don't mind marking up your Bible or take notes here, underline the word peace. Notice here that we're justified by faith and we have peace with God through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And through him, we've obtained access. Underline that word access. We have access by faith into the grace. Remember, we said grace is all of God's ability, all of God's power, all of who he is extended towards us. So we have access into that uh, by faith. And then notice here, it says, in which we stand. It is positional. It is speaking of our righteousness, that we are righteous in God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, our positioning or our posture is that we are standing. We stand in him. And then notice here, it does not stop. He could have put a period there. He did not. There's a comma. He goes on to say, and we rejoice. I want you to underline that. And we rejoice. Again, we have peace. Notice we have access Notice that we stand, but we also, we rejoice. We have joy in hope of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice. Notice that he says it again as to reiterate. He says, and again, and again, and again. Uh, not only that, 
we rejoice or have joy in our sufferings. Knowing, that's an important word there, knowing that suffering produces endurance. Endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope won't let you down. Hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. The Holy Spirit has been given. He's a gift who has been given to us. It can be said he's the gift that keeps on giving. He keeps on giving into us. I love this passage. Ah, I love God's word. I love the fact that Paul encourages us today to note that we have peace with God. He encourages us to know that we have access to God and all of God's power and that we stand in God and therefore we can rejoice or have joy in God. I was thinking about this um, some time ago. Uh, many of you know my background in that the first part of my life, my Christian faith of where I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ was rooted and grounded in my childhood church of Shiloh Baptist Church. I was a member, a little child, when I was baptized at the age of seven at Shiloh. I was baptized by the late Willie P. Cook. Many of you in this generation would not know him. But Pastor Cook was a giant of a man, even though he only stood five feet something. He was a little guy. And uh, when he would walk in the room, we thought we were looking at, as far as we were concerned, particularly in the African-American community, we thought we were looking at the chief. I mean, when he stepped in, everybody just looked, you know. He was a very humble man, very humble, very great. He didn't like a lot of fanfare. He didn't like a lot of attention. He didn't like a lot of that, even though at the time he pastored what would be considered the largest African-American church in Sacramento that was well into the thousands back in those days. You had to get in and you had literally to get on the street. You had to get on 9th Avenue, that little old narrow street, little old narrow street, which was just a couple of doors down from the headquarters of the Hells Angels for Northern California. They'd be going in for their meeting. We'd be going in for our church service. And it was a little narrow street, but cars would just be parked all over the place. And I was thinking about how there was an energy that was in the room, just walking onto the church campus, and you'd be standing in the foyer, and you'd be waiting for the ushers to open the doors. You know, back then, the ushers didn't play. Them ushers put them white gloves on, and, and they said, don't enter. You did not enter, and, and you better not talk back. <laughs> them ushers didn't play, but I remember how we would go in, and it was almost a pageantry going into the house of the Lord. It was a, almost a, an awe, even as a child. I, I remember as a two-year-old, a two-year-old that was in the nursery, I wanted to be inside what we called the big church, it would be considered this. This is about the size of the auditorium and it'd be about this many people. And I wanted to be in the big church. So one day I made my escape from the nursery. <laughs> and I got out of the nursery and ran down the hallway and everybody was in church and Pastor Cook would come in halfway through the service and he just happened to walk in the hallway and saw me walking there. I had pulled all my clothes off. Back then we didn't have pull-ups so I had my little diaper on. And I'm sitting there, and he grabbed me in his arms, took me in front of 800 people, held me in his arm, and says, does this belong to anybody? <laughs> and my mother got up horrified. <laughs> horrified. And walked down the aisle and picked me up and brought me in. But I remember that vividly. I remember that vividly. Later on, I would go into what is called the Pentecostal church. And the Pentecost, I tell people, my foundation came from the Baptist church, but I got my fire from the Pentecostal church. And when I went in the Pentecostal church, I'll never forget, 
the people back then, the saints did not have a lot of income. They did not drive fancy cars. They didn't live in the best neighborhoods and things to that effect. They had smaller buildings than Shiloh. It was a little smaller buildings. But the saints, whenever they would come inside the auditorium, the first thing that they would do before they would do anything, before they started singing, before they started getting on the choir or the worship team, or it wasn't a worship team, then it was either the choir or you were the testimony leader. And I remember they would come in and everybody, everybody would come in and kneel at their seat. The first thing that they would do is that they, when they walked in the auditorium or the, the little sanctuary, little humble sanctuary, sometimes these little churches look like little houses. They were reconverted houses. They were totally reconverted houses. They had these big old swamp water air conditioners in the, wind, in the window. You had the water hose hooked up. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. That, they had the water hose hooked up and it would blow cool air in the place. And it was just a house. But the saints would get down and kneel and pray. And I could not figure out then, and I'm still mesmerized by it now, how joyful they were. And how the joy that they possessed was not predicated upon what they had. The joy that they had was not predicated upon their positioning in the community. Some of them did not come from anything that would be commendable, but they were so glad to be counted among the saints of God, to be in the house of the Lord. Can I preface this study by saying to you, beloved, we need the days where the people of God are just glad to be in the number glad to be in the house of the Lord. I don't know about you. I'll repeat the words of a brother who told me the other day. He says, coming here, it's like coming to a hospital. I'm able to let go of the weight of the world and come in here and be with the community and be with brothers and sisters. And, and there's a joy that comes in this place. Ah, oh, beloved, we need this more than ever. We've got, I, I can't watch too much of CNN. I can't watch none of Fox. I can't watch too much of the foolishness that is out here right now. I, I, I can't watch the foolishness of saying that people are, are eating animals in Ohio when you know it's a lie. And, but yet there's people that will believe that lie and, and back that lie. I can't, there's something that is so off about a lot of this going on in the world today. I've just come through a global pandemic and I can't figure out how millions of people died and lost their lives and yet I'm still here. I'm, 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 I'm trying to put all the pieces together so in saying that, beloved, I need some joy. I need some joy. I need to be able to come here and have joy. I, I need some joy. Somebody came in here today, and you need to leave here with some joy. Because there's a lot of things going on right now. On your job, there's a lot of things going on right now. There's some decisions that need to be made right now. But in the words of the Apostle Paul, I have to just remind you, you have peace with God. And not only do you have peace with God, you have access uh, to everything that God has for you. You have access by faith into his promises. And then I have to remind you, that you can also stand. Having done all to stand, just keep standing. Even with your shaky knees, keep standing. Because the reality is that God has already put his hand on you and he's already working in your favor and I have a feeling everything's gonna be all right. So you might as well rejoice. Fix your, come on, help me preach this. Tell somebody, fix your face and rejoice. Hallelujah. He says in the text, we rejoice in hope 
of the glory of God. Not only that, but we rejoice even when we're going through something in our suffering. But notice how we do this. Knowing. Say with me, knowing. knowing. See, it's all in your knowing. You've got to know that whatever you're facing, it has the potential to produce. I'm going to talk it through with you. Whatever you are facing right now, beloved, whatever challenge the marriage, the family, your child is dealing with, you, it has the potential of production. You have to know that your suffering is producing endurance. If you can just hold on there. Your endurance is producing some character. Ah, uh, if you can understand that your character is producing some hope, not wish, but hope, a, a knowledge, a firm belief that God is on your side, that God is working for you. Hope does not put you to shame because God has poured his Holy Spirit on us. He has poured out his love upon us. The Holy Spirit not only helps me to love, but it helps me to know how loved I am. Ah, uh, let me say that again. The Holy Spirit, oftentimes we talk about how he helps us to love and we're to love one another. But beloved, you really can't love one another until you know how much you are loved. When you know you are loved, when you know how much God cares for you, you will treat people differently. You won't worry so much about what they think of you or what they're doing or what they're not doing. You will treat people differently when you know that God loves you. When you know when nobody else wants to be bothered with you. Because tell the truth, some people are just tired of our foolishness. But even God, he says, I will hang with you. I will stay with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I will tell you, you are my own. What a mighty God we serve. God, I love him. I love the Lord Jesus. So he has poured out into our hearts the love of God through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us and we will treat and interact with people different. Now let's, let's talk about that for a moment because I think this is crucial for us to understanding how to walk in joy. And it is found here, look with me in Romans 14. And I want you to see how the scriptures tie together. In Romans 14, I'm going to read verses 1 through 12. Notice what it says. As for the one who is weak in faith, mm -hmm, the one who is weak in faith, welcome them. Welcome them. But do not quarrel over opinions. One person believes that he may eat anything. While the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed her. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master or her own master that he or she stands or falls. And God, and this man, rather a woman, he will be upheld for the Lord can make her stand. The Lord will make them stand. Notice here, beloved, and I want you to write this down. Our joy is aligned with our attitude towards others. Our joy is aligned with our attitude towards others. How you treat me and how I treat you will determine the level of joy that I'm able to experience within my life. There are those of us in this room, the reason why we have our joy meter is sometimes here and sometimes there, sometimes up, sometimes down. It is tied many times to our attitude towards other people. How I think about others many times will determine, many times will determine the level of joy that I have in my own life. Let me stay home here on Capitol Avenue. That's why center of praise, we must embrace what is the DNA of our church. And you can't get away from it. You have to hold on to it. You must hold on to the DNA in this church is that we will be a kind and a sweet 
and a caring people. I'm clapping the way you clap. The way you clap, that's why I'm preaching this. That's exactly why I'm preaching this. I'm preaching just the way you're clapping. That's why I'm preaching this. We cannot get away, sinner of praise, for who God has called us to be. We're getting ready to celebrate 35 years, and we cannot go in bitter. We cannot go in acting foolish, rolling our eyes, thinking we have arrived, thinking you have made it. I don't understand how it is that we can have an attitude and treat people the way that we do, not just in the church, but outside the church because they don't measure up to where you think you are. Notice I didn't say you're there. I say you think you're there. You think you have made it. You think you have arrived. Oh, what tangled weaves we weave when we first seek to deceive. It's a terrible thing to be deceived in your mind to think that you are all of that and that you are better than anybody. I don't care who they are. I don't care if they're broke, if they're rich, if they're red, if they're yellow, if they're black, if they're gay, if they're straight, I don't care who they are. They are God's children. They're God's children. Be careful who you put your mouth on. Be careful just because they don't measure up to what you think they ought to be. Help me preach somebody. Tell somebody, I may not be what you think I ought to be, but I show him what God is creating me to be. He's working on my life. He's delivering me. He's setting me free. He's giving me joy. He's transforming me. Come on, somebody. Give God a praise because you have the joy of the Lord. Could it be, could it be, could it be, children, that your joy is connected towards your attitude towards others? There's a whole lot of folks that do things that I may not agree or don't like, but they belong to God. Because if I tell the truth, if you tell the truth, there's a whole lot of things you do that God doesn't like. Is there anybody that's glad that he doesn't kick you to the curb? That's why joy is, my joy is attached. I tell, I tell my students up at, um, up at uh, Jessup, when I'm walking around on the campus, I, I, I insist that they not just walk by me and not speak. I insist. I don't let them walk by me and not speak. I speak, which almost forces them to speak back. They'll be walking. And I said, good morning, young man. Good morning, young lady. Good morning. They, they don't, they don't be like that. Someone will be breaking their teeth. Well, good morning. <laughs> but they do it. They do it. Now it's gotten to the point where they just do it. They just say, because they know I'm going to say good morning. Even in this church, beloved, you can't afford the luxury of coming in here and just rolling your eyes at folk. That's not who we are. That's not who we are. When we walk in here, when we're walking down the street, when we're coming into the building, when we're down here, we, we have joy. And we greet one another with the joy of the Lord. 
I, 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 the worship team needs to have joy when they sing to us. I don't want nobody standing up here frowning at me. I don't want an usher fighting with me like they've been in a dog fight. Have some joy about yourself. Because you have peace. You know that you have peace with God. You know that you have access by faith into the grace of God. You know that you are standing not in your own righteousness, but in the righteousness of Christ Jesus. Come on, smile at anybody that's going to smile at you. and say, Just look at them and say, I need you to speak and I'm going to speak to you. Go ahead and tell them, I need you to speak and I'm going to speak to you. You understand? I'm going to speak. There's a woman. There's a woman in this church. I don't know where she's at. One of my greeters is in this church. She's one of my greeters. And every Sunday when she sees me, every Sunday, I don't know how she started it, she always greets me the same way. Good morning. <laughs> Where's she at? Where, there, there she is. She, Good morning. And she puts that big smile on her face and she says, good morning. <laughs> she got me saying that. I said it the other day up at the university. Folk were rolling their eyes, good morning. <laughs> but that's our DNA. That's who we are. Let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. Watch this. It gets even better, y'all. Hold on. He says, why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you... Uh, are you, why do you despise your brother or sister? Even worse. For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow. Listen, here, write this down. Not only is our joy aligned with our attitude, our joy is aligned with our level of submission. Not only is our joy aligned with our attitude, but it's aligned with our level of submission to God. I treat you the way I treat you with love and respect because one day we all have got to stand before the Lord. And when we stand before the Lord, beloved, I want to be rewarded for my good works. I want the Lord to remember that I spoke something good to you to encourage you. I had a pastor yesterday. He's a Hispanic pastor. And he and I have served on a couple of boards and things to that effect. But he sent me a most beautiful text. Sent me a text. He's never texted me before. But he just sent this text to me and he says, and I, I remember it so vividly. He says, Bishop, I just wanted to let you know, remind you. I love it. He says, I want to remind you that you are a man of God and that I respect you and that I am praying for you. And I want you to know that I am covering you and your family in my prayers. Now, he didn't have to do that. But the fact that he did changed the whole course of my day. Has anybody texted you recently and sent you a text that changed your whole day, changed your whole perspective? Better yet, have you texted anybody? just to let them know I'm praying for you and I want you to be encouraged. I don't know what you might be going through, but I just woke up this morning and wanted you to know that God had you on my mind and here's a scripture to encourage you. Beloved, I believe that when we submit ourselves to God, the Holy Spirit will begin to speak to us how to care and minister to one another. But you got to submit you got to bow those knees. Don't worry about my knee bowing. You bow your knee. With your little mean self trying to kick me to get my knees to bow. You bow your knee. <laughs> Don't worry about my knee bowing. Sometimes some of you feel like you are Holy Ghost Junior. That you have been sent to correct everybody. To fix everybody. Our joy is tied to how we submit to God. And aren't you glad he's not mean to us? 
Aren't you glad God's not mean to us? Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad? Let me finish it up. As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess. Here's the third one. Our joy aligns with our mouth confession. Not only is our joy tied to our attitude or aligns with our attitude, but second, our joy is aligned to our level of submission and last, our joy aligns with our mouth's confession. Some of us are not living a joyful life because you have talked yourself where you're at. You have talked yourself into defeat. You have talked yourself into fear and intimidation. You've got to change what's in your mouth. The word of God says you are snared by the words of your mouth. The word there is actually in the Hebrew. You are trapped by the words that are in your mouth. If you say that you can't make it, you will feel like you cannot make it. If you say that I'm whipped, you will feel whipped. But you have to say even when you're weak, you've got to say that you're strong. You've got to say, change the narrative of your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you that I have the joy of the Lord and it is my strength. You've got to change your conversation. Let me help you here. I was sitting the other day and I was thinking about this because there's two uh, young people in this church that wanted to be a blessing to me. And they went and, and bought me some tennis shoes, some Nikes, the ones I'm wearing now. In case you didn't notice. Luke Wood ain't the only one that can wear some tennis shoes. Come on, somebody. I'm sitting there and they bought me these tennis shoes, Luke. And I looked, and the tennis shoes had a gold emblem on it that says Nike. I got educated to the fact that to have the gold emblem means they have been custom made. <laughs> then I looked on the tongue of the shoe, and y'all, it had my license plate on it. It had one black PhD engraved on each tongue of the shoe. So then I got my shoes on today, and at first I was trying to be all shy and cute, and folk was saying, Bishop got new shoes, and I was trying to be shy and cute. But when I saw that these shoes were a blessing, I leaned back like an NBC peacock, I began to strut. I found out it's okay to say that I am blessed. I found out it's okay to say that I have joy. I found out that it's better than okay to say I am blessed and highly favored. I found out that when God blesses you, you just cannot be cursed. Come on, tell somebody, change your narrative. I gotta get out of here. Change your narrative. I want you to prophesy to somebody in this house because they need to hear this. Because depression, fear, intimidation, and doubt is countering your joy. It is countering your joy. Your joy is going to help you to produce some things. There are some things that have got to be pushed through in the spirit realm. But you're going to have to add your praise on top of it. You're going to have to put your confession on top of it. You're going to have to put your behavior, how you treat one another, on top of it. So I want you to look at somebody and look them right in the eyeball and say, in the name of Jesus, I command joy to overtake your life. You are not defeated. You are not fearful. You are not cursed. But you are blessed of the Lord. And whatever you do, Pursue it with joy. 
sing with joy, work with joy, talk with joy, live with joy. Put your hands together and give them a praise. Come on here. Tell your neighbor, say the joy of the Lord is your strength. Say the joy of the Lord is strengthening you right now. The joy of the Lord is bringing you higher. The joy of the Lord is wrapping his arms around you. The joy of the Lord is giving you peace. The joy of the Lord is opening doors. The joy of the Lord is pushing back your enemy. The joy of the Lord is opening doors. The joy, the joy, the joy, the joy, the joy, 